put this presentation on. Um, it's uh, it, you know an important time to be thinking about marketing. It's an important time to get information out to small businesses. So to be able to do that with this group, uh, I'm, I'm very glad to spend my day with this. Um, now, just to get a little bit more into my background, because for some of you, you may have already seen me speak, uh, but if you haven't, there's some context to my background that I think will help inform you a little bit more about how to interpret this material. So I started out in my career doing major international sport events, like Chad said, I did Olympic Winter Games and Rugby World Cup. And I worked with the U.S. Olympic Committee. So these are, you know, some of the biggest brands in the world, some of the biggest events in the world. And I believe that their process years before an event starts is getting a bunch of people sitting around, you know, a bunch of executives sitting around a table and they say, who are we trying to reach and what are we trying to say to them? And they'll really establish all of the different audiences they're trying to talk to. They'll come up with the core message and they'll tweak it a little bit for each very target market that they have on their list. So as somebody who worked for those events, I got to watch how that rolled out over time. I got to see, you know, once you're one or two or three years into that plan for a big event like that, how do you see those different messages continue to evolve? And how do you watch them really hone in on those target markets over the years so they can build enough attention with them, enough trust, enough traction with them, that by the time they're ready to make a call to action, whatever that call to action is for that audience, they've got a group of people who have been nurtured and they're ready and waiting for that next step. So seeing it on a big scale like that was very informative to me. And when I started my own business eight years ago, you know, uh, Melissa Forsy at Events and Marketing is a micro business, just like many of you likely have. So I certainly didn't have the resources of an Olympic Games. I didn't have the budget. I didn't have the human resources, the, the time of a whole team. But I still had to make my marketing message get out there. I had to effectively market my business. And it's the same with the clients that I work with. So the principles here still apply. We have to get a little creative in how we get in front of people. But this presentation really is about honing in on those foundational elements of your business, your brand and your target market, making sure that you understand those pieces and that as you, as you roll out messages to your audience, you continue to honor the decisions that you made at this core level. If you can do that, your marketing ultimately will be far more effective in the long run. So that's a little bit of a setup on why I'm presenting this and what background I bring into it. Now, a few quick housekeeping items before we jump into the content here. First of all, um, I do encourage you, if you're on with me live, I encourage you to put yourself on mute while I'm presenting just so we can minimize distractions. But I, first of all, I actively encourage participation in the chat. If you have anything that you want to say throughout, please feel free to pop it in there or any questions. Um, and, you know, the reason that I'm suggesting silencing your phone or shutting off messaging devices, everything, every time I present, I'm really trying to, in, to think about making it useful for you in real time. So the more you're able to think about your business in the context of this material, the more you're going to take away from this presentation. So I encourage you to make sure that you're able to focus in, minimize the distractions around you, and really use this time to apply this material to your business. Now, there's going to be a number of slides here that are handy resources, and that's intentional. So I wanted you to be aware of a few things here. First of all, Chad popped into the chat um, a landing page link for my website that has the resources from this session, excluding the recording, which is going to be generated on the SVDC side. It's going to have all of the slides. Um, it's also going to have a couple of additional exercises in it. I'm just looking at what I've put in there. I've got a couple that are coming up, and I'll, I'll let you know as we go along what you can see in that landing page, as well as some additional blogs that I've curated for this. So there's a ton of material for you to read after the session is over in that location. And lastly, in terms of questions, I usually try to save time for questions at the end. Um, you know, if you have a question as we go along, maybe a signal in the chat that you have something that you wanted to ask about and I'll address it there because I wanna make sure that you have a good foundation before we move forward into more complicated parts of this topic. Um, I will also 
pose some questions to you as we go along at intervals. And if you're on with me live, you're welcome to put your answers into the chat. But if you're not on with me live, if you're watching this back recorded, just take a moment to think about your answers. Because again, I want this to be sort of living and breathing for your business so that you can really think about how this material relates back to the specific business that you run. Now, what are we trying to accomplish today? Well, you know, we're going to talk about brand and target market. And one of the important things I want you to bear in mind is that you probably have more target markets than you think you do. A lot of times people have multiple target markets that they're dealing with, or even multiple slightly nuanced segments. And it's important that you speak to them directly. And oops, sorry, I have to sneeze. Uh, it's important that you speak to them directly. As an example, as a speaker, typically I speak directly to small businesses. I can also speak to uh, people who coach small businesses, like I've spoken at the ASBDC conference, which is where I met Jennifer. So, you know, I can speak in that format, but usually I'm speaking to a room full of small business owners, but not all rooms full of small business owners are the same. So I can present the same basic material to people in different places and find that I need to make some adjustments to how I deliver it. And I need to be receptive to that at the time when I'm crafting that material and at the time when I'm delivering it. You know, for example, yes, I'm still reaching small business owners in all cases, but it might be different if I'm reaching a room full of people who have a lot of budget versus not a lot of budget, people in an urban area versus a rural area, uh, people who are all in one industry versus not all in one industry. Um, I've found some differences state to state in questions that I get or examples I might need to give. Uh, if it's, a, let's say that's a women's only conference or it's a, a mixed audience, there are going to be little things that I have to change in my delivery to really be appropriate in that room and to get people's attention and to make them feel that I had crafted that material specifically for them. So even though all of those rooms are still small business owners, if I just deliver everything exactly the same way every single time, I'm going to shortchange the people who came to that session and probably not have their full attention as a result. So that's something that I've really had to learn over time. And and um, understand the minor nuances that I'm dealing with. And that's something that I bring to my marketing now as well. So with your business, your business is different than mine, but yet you probably have nuances to your own audience that you can capture in the messaging that you put out there. And so today we're really gonna be looking at how you can be more receptive and more, more attentive to the little changes that you need to make when talking to people in different forums. So how are we gonna get there? Here's what we'll do. We'll start by talking about the foundation of your marketing. Then we're gonna get into the target market piece, then the brand piece. So we'll look at who are your target markets, then we'll look at a brand that speaks to your target market. And finally, my, you know, this, is, this one's a little bit for me. I love talking about psychological tips, tips and tricks. So I'll we'll throw some psychological tricks to capture your audience's attention in there at the end. Uh, some, I think some really cool stuff is in there and it might get you thinking in a different way about how you market or what you throw into your marketing. So that's what we have coming up here. And if that all sounds good to you, Let's go ahead and let's start talking about pinpointing your brand and target market. Now, as we get ready to do that, I want to throw a question out to everybody first. If you're on with me live, feel free to uh, put your answer to this in the chat so I can get a sense of who's with me here. But if you're, if you're watching this back, it's probably good just to settle into these different categories and see which one is relevant to you. So where are you in your business right now? Are you new to business, brand new, pre-launch? Um, are you settled in business? Maybe you've been in business a couple of years. Are you rebranding? I know a lot of people had to do that in the last couple of years. Um, are you launching something new? Maybe a lot of your business is the same, but you've got a service line or an offering that's going to be brand new to you. Or maybe it would other, you know, maybe you would otherwise be settled in business, but you're still trying to navigate fluctuations with the pandemic that's been happening. Um, so far, we've for those who are here with me live, you know, got new to retail business. Okay, that's that's awesome. Um, yeah, and so this is a good one just to sort of 
touch base on where we are new to business. Okay. Awesome. So at this moment, most of the people listening in are new to business, at least live with me here. I would say this presentation is relevant for all of these categories in some way, but I would say if you're newer to business or you're launching something brand new, or maybe you've never thought about brand and target market in a, in a formal way, that this is a great time to get to this presentation because you really have a lot of opportunity to make more changes and be more nimble with your decisions. So thanks for sharing that with me. It certainly gives me a better idea of how to communicate with those who are with me live. So that's awesome. Thank you for that. Well, let's take that information and move it forward. Let's talk about the foundation of your marketing. Now, there's a, a simple metaphor here that I like to think about. A home is only as solid as the foundation it's built upon, right? We, we often think of that, um, you know, the foundation being key to the rest of the structure. So you look at even these two images and, you, you know, maybe there, there's a lot of, lot of differences between those two homes that I've just shown on those last couple of slides. But the idea is that the sturdier your foundation is, the more likely the structure above ground is going to be able to hold up. Um, so, so that's something that we, we often hear, but when you see it physically, it's maybe a little bit easier to understand. The thing is, it's exactly the same for your marketing plan. At the end of the day, you need a solid foundation, a solid structure for your marketing plan to then build all your messaging on top of that and to build a whole marketing strategy on top of that, for that matter. So if you're going to be effective in marketing long term, you have to have set a solid foundation for that marketing with ultimately the things we're talking about today, your brand and your target markets. But there is one in particular that to me is the foundation of everything, and that is your target markets. Yes, we will also be talking about brands today, but brands ultimately to me has to stem from the audiences that you're trying to reach. Because if you develop a brand independently of that, you're going to be developing a brand that has nothing to do with what your target markets want to hear. We have to have those things synced up perfectly in order to be effective. So let's assume that that foundation that we're trying to create is stemming from your target markets and understanding who those people are. Now, given what this presentation is, I know I'm probably going to say the words target market a lot of times. So let's stop down for a moment and make sure we're all working with the same definition of target market here. So for the working definition we'll use today, let's just say that a target market is the people who would be most likely to be interested in your product, your service, your program, your idea, whatever it is you're selling. These are the people who would be most likely to want to buy it. Hopefully it makes sense to you that those are the people that you want to be in front of. If you are in a room full of people who would never be interested in what you want to sell and you shout your offer at the top of your lungs every day for a week, those people are still not going to be ready or interested because that wasn't the right group of people to hear your message. Whereas if you're in a room full of people who could be interested under the right conditions for your product or service, and you go into that room and you shout the message at the top of your lungs for a week, maybe over time you'll see some people who are ready for that message, who the conditions are right for them. They're, they're, you know, they, they feel like they've, you, you hit the right place at the right time or suddenly they've gotten all their questions answered and now they could potentially start buying something from you because you were in the right place talking to the right people. So we're looking to access not everybody in the world, we're looking to access our target markets and get in front of them with our message until they're comfortable, until the conditions are right for them. And that's when we see sales happening. So hopefully that, you know, in case you were wondering more about target markets, this is important before we move on, because I'm going to say target market a lot today. Now, having said that, and I mentioned this in the beginning of this presentation, but you probably have more than one target market. Chances are that you do, most people do. In fact, a lot of times I get a question around this point, which is why I have this slide and you know, somebody will say, but I, I feel like I have more than one audience. I'll say, you probably do, so let's talk to each one specifically. And we're gonna be working that out today so that you have a better idea of how to do that. Um, if you have more than one target market, it's important that you 
acknowledge that and you address them separately and you know how you would address them separately. And that's where your slightly different messaging comes in from place to place. Now, here's why to me, target market is ultimately the foundation for you, even more so than brand. If you don't know your audience, here are some things you also wouldn't know. First of all, you wouldn't know what pain points your offering resolves. If you're not sure who you're talking to, how do you know what's hurting them? How do you know what it is they need resolved so that you can address that with your offerings? If you don't know your audience, you also wouldn't know where to put your marketing message because how could you know where they are if you're not totally sure who they are? If you don't know your audience, you also wouldn't know how to package your message or your product. You're going to see more of this with the psychological tricks section as well. There are some quick things that you can do to sort of break through and get people's attention. And that all has to do with packaging and also the next one, language. But that is, again, very specific to the audience you're trying to reach. Knowing how to break through and what they need to see from you to get their attention is then something you put into your packaging and your language. Now, an extension of this is that if you don't know your audience, you wouldn't know what your brand should be. So, you know, you're, if, if everything about your message is meant to relate back to your audience and to get their attention, then ultimately you have to know who they are to craft that perfect message. Now, another interesting thing here is that if you don't know your audience, you wouldn't really know what would motivate them to buy what you sell. You know, when you're getting in front of somebody with a message, again, I've said it a couple of times, the conditions eventually need to be right for them where they're ready to buy your product or service. And sometimes there's just a specific like key that you have to turn. You know, there's a specific type of motivation they need to have from you in order to make that that jump from hearing your message to acting on your message. So the more you know about them, the more you know what's gonna be that trigger that takes you from being somebody who's listening to me to somebody who's ready to work with me or buy something from me. And then lastly, and this is not to be denied, you know, if you don't know your audience, you might not even know what to offer. A lot of my offerings have come from working directly with clients because I've gotten to understand exactly what it is that they're looking for. And I've been able to package that into something I can deliver to other clients. It may very well be the same thing for you. Great offerings come from understanding your audience and solving their problems in as deep a way as you possibly can. So at a, at a core level, you know, if you know who your audience is, you will probably be able to package up the right offerings for them and get those to them. Um, and this changes the nature of your business. So all of these things, again, relate back to target market. And this is why, to me, it's so important to stop down on this topic and really understand this as a foundational element of your marketing. Now, having said all this, there's probably a question that's coming up for you that I'd like to start diving into. Who are your target markets? Let's talk about how we get, the, get to the answer to this question. So first of all, because we've said a few times that you likely have more than one target market, target markets aren't defined with just one or two words. So if you said to me, Melissa, who is your target market? If I answer that with small businesses and think that that's, you know, I'll call it a day and that's the only only thing I need, and I'm just going to get one message out there to small businesses and it's done, um, I'm probably not going to be as effective in marketing as I could be. It's the same thing for you. If you're defining your, mar your target market in a couple of words, that's probably not doing your business justice, and it's probably not helping you really hook in all the audiences that you need to reach. I'll, sh I'll show examples of this as we go along, but the idea of this is important to remember. So Bearing in mind that we're looking to create a more fully fleshed out understanding of who everybody is, let's talk about an, an exercise that you can do to get there. Now, I'm actually going to show you two different exercises today that you could do. The first one is going to be meeting target market head on with questions. We're going to try to profile those people. We're going to try to understand them. The second exercise is sort of a sideways way in that we're going to look at in the brand section when we get there in this presentation. So here's this first way. I like to think of this as the, you know, avatar development exercise where you get separate pieces of paper and or, you know, separate 
rows of an Excel spreadsheet or separate. I don't know if you if you're an artist, maybe you draw different pictures that represent your your the, the different audiences you're trying to reach, whatever works for you. What we're trying to do here is make your audiences look completely separate to you and then start answering questions specific to each one to help you develop a full profile of who you're reaching. So here's the questions we'll ask. The first one, again, on each separate piece of paper. This one is simple. We're going to say, is, our, is this market that you're selling to business to business, B2B, or business to consumer, B2C? Now, some people like to get more specific than that here. I encourage you to hold off on that and get more specific in the second question. This first one is really just sort of helping us divide out which types of questions to ask in two, three, and four, because you will see in a moment how much it shifts, whether you're selling B2B or B2C. So again, each separate piece of paper, answer that first question. Now we move on to the second one. Again, this answer might be different for each audience. Who is this target market? Now, if you're selling business to business, there are gonna be certain ways you might define this. Like for example, company size, uh, company mission, or is there a certain value set that company needs to have? Uh, is there a certain industry they need to be in? Even more specific than that, who is who, who exactly at that company do you need to reach? Because if you need to get in front of uh, payroll, but you got your message to somebody in legal, those things might not, that, that gap might not be bridged in your message. So you really want to make sure you know exactly who at that company is going to be the person who should receive your message. And those are the people that you want to reach. Now, if you're selling business to consumer, we've got a completely separate list of questions to ask here. You might want to ask yourself, is this, you know, is there a certain age that I'm targeting, a certain gender, a certain culture, uh, language? Um, is there, do they need to be wine lovers or dog owners? Do they need to be married or single? Do, you know, there's so many different elements that you could be trying to capture in here. And now we're getting down to a very specific individual level. So the questions you would ask B2B or B2C are a little different but we'll ask those on each separate piece of paper to continue to flesh out who these people are. Now, from there, we're gonna to go to question three. Where is this target market? Now, I define the where in two different ways. First, where is geographically? Where on a map are these people? So for that, you know, maybe you're selling all over the world. Maybe you're selling just in specific countries or just in the United States or just in Texas or, you know, how much more specific are you going down to just one, you know, main street? You know, is it just one, one block that you're trying to reach all the people on? You know, you have to really think about where on a map are these people, but that's not enough because let's say they're, you know, in a specific city. Well, you can't just go anywhere in that city and shout from a street corner your message. You ultimately want to be able to uh, get a message directly in front of them, which has a lot to do with behavior. So not only on a map, but where in any given day can I find these people? What does their behavior bring them to on a daily basis where you could potentially meet them there? So for example, um, you know, do they, go, are they working at home? Are they working in a, in a office setting? Are they in a school? Are they, where are they getting their news? Where are they shopping? Where are they getting their information? Where are they, uh, are, do they go bowling on Wednesday nights? Do they go to the bar to have a drink with the guys after? You know, like if you can start understanding day to day, where specifically in that location can you find those people? Now you're really getting a lot more information about where can I market to them? So we want to we want to sort of profile them. Uh, what what do you do all day? So question three, where are you on a map and what do you do all day? That both the both of those things still get you to the where in slightly different ways. Now, question four on each separate piece of paper, but also for each location where you can probably find them behaviorally, how can you reach them there? So if they go bowling on Wednesday nights, well, what are your options from reaching them in that place? You know, are there bulletin boards? 
Are there newsletters? Are there over, are there announcements you can make on a loudspeaker? Are there, you know, what are, what are the different ways that you can get in front of them in that place? Look at that for every location where you can find them. And now you're really getting a full picture of who these people are. Now, I will say, having talked through all this, this might seem overwhelming to you. This might seem like, wow, that's a lot of research to do on these people. And it is, it takes time to start answering these questions for each audience. But here's the thing, look at what you have if you've done this work. You know everything about this audience. All you now need is to give your message to them, be in front of them, however you can, however you can do it. So this research will actually, first of all, it'll save you time in the long run, but it'll also make your marketing far more efficient because you know exactly where you need to be and you'll only be in those places. A lot of times when clients work with me, they'll say, I'm thinking about marketing here. And the only reason they're thinking about marketing over here is that they've heard about it and people are saying it's good, but it may have nothing to do with whether their audience is there or not. So I will then get to the root of that question with them and I'll say, okay, I know you want to market on TikTok, but is your audience there? And where specifically are they? And sometimes we start doing the math on it and we realize you could market there if you want to, but you're not reaching the audience who would be likely to buy something from you. So why spend that time and energy? Why not divert that instead to something that would get directly in front of them? So these questions, again, they do take time, but with that research, you can really come up with some important answers. And I'm just looking at the resources that I have for you in my landing page. Um, and one of them is how to research where your target markets are. So I encourage you to check that resource out after this session if this is work that you want to do. Now, I'm going to give you an example business that may help put some context to how specific you can get. And I thought I'd use a company that probably most of us would recognize. So here we've got Nike. And I was curious if I would be able to recognize what their target markets were just by looking at their website. So here are some of the filters that I found for them. The first level that I could spot was that they've got men's, women's, and then they've got a category of boys and girls. So basically they have got like these three categories to start with, men's, women's, boys, and girls, but they don't stop there. Now within each category, so for example, with men and with women, they've got these, this whole list um, replicated each time. They've got lifestyle products, running, training in gym, basketball, Jordans, football, all the way down to easy on and off. Now, when you think about that, the marketing starts to write itself. If they're trying to reach a skateboarding audience, they're going to be showing them the skateboarding shoes, the skateboarding apparel. They're going to be putting it on famous skateboarder models. They're going to put it in skateboarder magazines. Um, and this is going to be very different than the easy on and off crew, right? They're going to have, you know, probably completely different line of products. They're going to have different people modeling. They're going to put it in different locations that are going to reach, I'm guessing, an older market. Um, they are, there's, this starts to write itself when you really think about the nuances of these audiences. So all of this translates to their external marketing, which we can't see at the moment unless we look it up, but on their website, I'm seeing that this is how they're breaking it down and they're creating a home for those people to land on if they direct those specific marketing tools for those audiences to these products, they've got a, a handy landing page they can send them to that's specific to them. They do even go a step further than this though. They, they have filters for price and color and technology and feel and surface and brand and size. And some of these things may translate to other target markets as well. Maybe not all of them, but to me, you know, price point probably does. Maybe technology might, you know, if somebody's really interested in sort of the gadgets of their apparel, um, maybe surface, maybe size, if you're looking for really kind of sizes that are not within a standard range, 
you might you know need to know where to look for that. So some of these things, maybe brand. So some of these things could potentially signal different target markets as well. Think about how specific we're getting with this, even just by looking at their filters. Now they've got it so they can do these filters. You might not have a feature like this on your website. So this, your marketing is your filter um, to help get people to the right place. So at the end of the day, I just wanna sort of wrap this section with this idea. Yeah, sure, they make shoes for everyone, but people don't have to have shoes for everyone. They wanna have shoes. I, I'm a skateboarder, I want the skateboarding shoes. You know, I'm a basketball player, those are, the, those are the shoes I want. I'm, you know, looking for the easy on and off shoes, those are the shoes I want. A lot of times when I'm talking to business owners and I say, who's your audience? They'll say, everyone. Everyone does not trigger anyone to pay attention to your message. A lot of times I'll then say, oh, okay, so like you sell to clowns and babies and lawyers, and they'll be like, okay, not actually everyone. They'll say, all right, then let's get more specific than that and really figure out who you're trying to reach. Because if you can deliver a specific message to each specific audience, they're far more likely to listen to you than if you go generalist on them. So that is an important thing to remember. Maybe if you remember only one thing from this message, from this presentation, that's the one to remember. Um, let's let's try to strike the word everyone from our language when we start talking about target markets. Now, because of that, because we've been doing this work on target markets, we can now talk about a brand that speaks to your target market. How can we get super specific with our message? So I'm gonna pose a question to you here. Um, for those of you who are with me live, feel free to answer this in the chat. Uh, have you done a brand statement exercise before? If you're not on with me live, just rack your brain. Think if you've done an exercise like this before. This is not a mission statement. It's not a elevator pitch. It's something a little bit different than that. Um, so far, I'm getting no's. Um, so great, because this is going to be a really useful piece of information for you to take away uh, moving into defining what your message is for each audience. So Let's talk about what a brand statement actually is. This is an internal exercise you do for your business. So a brand statement explains what you do, who you serve, and how you help those people. And if you were to look up brand statements online, you'd probably find a lot of different types of formats out there. But I have chosen this format on the next slide because it is actually very wordy and it asks you a lot of questions. So there it is. Um, when you do this exercise, I will warn you right now, you're gonna end up with some ridiculous run-on sentences. That is fine. What we're trying to do here is create a lot of language that you're gonna be able to use later for your business. This is not gonna give you perfect finalized marketing copy, but it's the road to get there. It's you really fleshing out who your audience is and how specifically you're serving them so that now that you've got all this language, you can turn it into mission statements, elevator pitches, copy on your website, copy in a social media post, what you say to them verbally. This is, like I said, an internal exercise to get you started. So here's the format for whoever the target market is, who want or need whatever it is they lack. My company provides whatever it is you give them that benefits them by whatever that primary benefit is so they can whatever the positive outcome might be. This could be a secondary benefit that they didn't know they were gonna get with your product or service as well. So again, this is gonna end up generating really long sentences, really long copy for you. And I had mentioned that this is also a sideways way to get into defining target markets. A lot of times when I do an exercise like this with a workshop or with clients in the room, I find that sometimes by the time we get to the end, they start throwing in other words that signal a different target market to me. And I'll go, hold on a second. That word you just threw in, is that the same audience? And they, so, and then we unpack that and we say, is it the same audience? Sometimes we realize that they have another audience that we need to capture. So you may feel like doing this exercise opens up a bit of a can of worms for you, but that's okay. We wanna find the edges. We, find, we wanna find how many different audiences you could reach and then you probably won't have the bandwidth to reach all of them. So we'll, we'll make some choices. Which ones are you going to lean into first? But this will help you get there as well. It's another way to do the research in a more creative way. 
So in order to do this, because I would love for you to be able to do this exercise afterwards, I thought it would be helpful for you to see this as an example. So let's do a couple of examples using what I think is a fictitious business that I made up called Move Right Physical Therapy. Hopefully I made that up, not intending to, uh, to conjure up any existing businesses here. Um, but Move Right Physical Therapy, we'll keep it really simple for now. And we'll say that they have two audiences, one being competitive athletes and one being seniors. I know those are still really general, but we're just giving a simple exercise here to show how these brand statements can work. So for athletes, here's, here's what that brand statement might look like. For competitive athletes who want or need to recover from a sports injury fully and quickly, my company provides committed care to get them back to 100% strength as soon as possible. That benefits them by getting them back to training while lessening the risk of re-injury so they can miss less time at practice and resume their normal workout schedule. So by being specific to athletes here, you can see that we're throwing in some specific language, sports injury, uh, get them back to 100% strength as soon as possible. Speed is of the essence here. They don't wanna miss time at practice. They wanna get back to their normal workout schedule. There is some really specific things here about what this audience is driven by that we can address in a brand statement by pulling it out separately like this. Now you'll see how different it is when we look at the other one. For seniors dealing with pain, who want or need a full recovery so they can resume light daily activities without pain, my company provides committed care to rehabilitate injuries and build strength to prevent future discomfort. That benefits them by providing a steady, long-term solution for their pain so they can return to the activities they love most without fear of further damage. So there's kind of a longer game this group is playing here. They're not looking to get back to practice, they don't wanna miss a day. They're, they wanna get back to something lighter that they just love to do. It doesn't have to be really fast. It just has to be that, you know, they just don't want the pain while they're doing those things. Um, so even with these two audiences still being somewhat general, you can already see that the language is different enough that it almost feels like this company is doing different things for them, but they're not. Move Right Physical Therapy does the same exact thing for both of these audiences. You hurt an elbow, you get the elbow exercises. You hurt a knee, you get the knee exercises. They might have some little tweaks in number of reps or how aggressive they are in trying to get through uh, some of those stages of physical therapy, but they're doing the same things to heal those body parts. So, you know, they don't have to change their offerings, but they do have to change how they talk to their audiences to make it sound relevant to them, like they understand them. You know, if if the seniors think that you're only talking to the competitive athletes, they're gonna think, oh, this isn't the place for me. And if we got a little bit more specific, you know, think back to the competitive athletes, how much more specific could you make that language if you were speaking to skiers or wrestlers or swimmers? You might say completely different things to those three different audiences to let them know that, oh, this is really for you. So that's what a brand statement allows us to do. It allow, allows us to be specific like that. So here's a few quick tips if you do this exercise for your own business. First of all, focus only on your audience and not on you. I can't stress this enough. A lot of times people will say to me, oh, I just created this business card or this website. What do you think about it? And I'll say, that's great. Why did you choose the color green? And they'll say, because I liked it. That's not the answer, right? Yeah, you liked it, that's great, but your audience for, is the first one that has to like it. And of the things that resonate for your audience, then you choose what looks best to you or what works best to you. But the first test it has to pass is that your audience has to resonate with this message. So when you create the message, think about how your audience will, will respond to it. Think about if it's actually telling them information they need to hear and then you can move forward. Now, with that, once you've decided that, speak a language so relevant they choose to listen, use words from your brand statement, you know, whenever you can, because you come up with them for a reason, you know, use that to influence the rest of the message that you put out there. Now also focus on one audience at a time. We've acknowledged you might very well have multiple audiences, but if you're specific about each one, 
put a specific message in front of each one that relates back to their brand statement. And again, I think when you think about the Nike example, that starts to make a little bit more sense. You're not going to put a message in front of the skateboarding audience that you would put in front of the basketball audience. You're just not going to do that. You put those two things out there separately. You've got both audiences. You're talking to both audiences, but you're not saying exactly the same things to them in the same ways. When you do that, it opens up an opportunity for you to make the specific value they are going to get clear to them. So the more you're honed in on which audience you're talking to, you may find that there are different benefits that each audience gets, even if just slightly. And you can put that into words for them so that they understand you, you get me, you understand my pain point, and you actually could help me resolve it. And then lastly, be consistent and persistent in your use of a brand statement. You know, your brand statement gives you a lot of room to move. You can do different campaigns, you can talk about different products, but you've got an essence of your message that hopefully will hold true from every single time you talk to people. And the reason that I say this and that I call this out is that many times people will say to me, I feel like my audience must be getting bored of my message. Haven't they heard this from me enough? And business owners will start to feel like they need to vary it up or switch it up to keep their audience interested. It's actually the opposite of that. You are probably listening to your message far more than anybody else is because you spend all this time crafting your your advertisements, your marketing, your, your pitches, you spend a lot more time with your business than anybody else does. So they, what they need from you, what everybody else needs from you is consistency. They need to see the same message over and over again, because they need to understand from one day to the next that you have the same business. So they need to see at the core that your message is coming from the same place. And if, they, if they're not seeing that, it's going to be confusing for them. But if they are seeing consistency, it eventually becomes a pattern for them that their brain will start to pick up on and put into their long-term memory. If you haven't become that pattern for them yet, they're probably not remembering you. So we have a lot of work to do to get people's attention, to keep it, and then to get into the long-term memory. And the only way you can break through that is by being as consistent as possible with who you are presenting your business to be. Yes, you can have different campaigns, you can have different, you know, you could you can have different sales, you can have different products, but it has to sound like it's coming from the same company with the same purpose. So having said all that, I've I've mentioned a couple of times there's a lot of work that you have to do to get people's attention. So let's talk about a few of the psychological tricks you can do to capture that attention as we wrap up here. Uh, you know, I, I happen to really like this part. This is, I'm kind of a nerd for this stuff. So hopefully there's going to be some new information here for you. Uh, you may have seconds to reach your audience. Think about how much time you spend as a consumer absorbing any specific message before you move on. We get easily distracted in today's world. We're moving on really quickly. Sometimes it may just be a matter of seconds even, you know, under five, maybe a couple, you know, think about how long you take scrolling through social media. How long do you look at any one specific message before you move on? I mean, we're, we're swiping through it as quickly as possible. You're driving down the street, you see a billboard. How long do you look at the billboard before you look away? Again, we might have seconds to break through. So what are some of the things that you can do in seconds that send a strong message? Here's the first thing, and there's a reason this is first, because colors are actually very powerful and colors mean something. So what I've done here is I've compiled, I've looked up a bunch of different color psychology charts and I've sort of put words from different ones that seemed to uh, be consistent uh, onto this one particular graphic. So you're seeing a bit of a composite on this graphic. Um, and I also wanna give a caveat that this is specific to US interpretation of color. If you, if you are marketing to another country, they might have different color meanings and you should look that up because you, we wanna be specific and respectful to different cultures. Um, so if you're marketing to people in the US, you know, look at whatever color is something you think you want to use for your business. What color are you using now? What does it actually mean? Or the reverse, what message are you trying to get across? When you create brand, when you create a brand, when you create a logo, when you're looking for what colors are going to be part of your color palette, let this be part of your process because 
you are not going to change people's interpretation of color. This is information that we've picked up on. As long as you are not colorblind, as long as you can actually see color, you, you have been getting information about this your entire life uh, from, from all different resources, from all different marketing, from all different companies. So it's better as a small business owner to lean in to people's existing interpretation of what colors mean than to try to go off the grid and re-educate them. So this is something to be aware of. Again, this slide, along with many other slides, will be in my slide deck. Uh, so you can grab that and really think about it a little bit more. But, you know, seriously, look back at the meanings of those colors and which ones say the things that you want them to say. Um, you know, it's, it's worth taking a moment to look at that, especially if you're on a clean slate, just getting started with your business. This is a great time for you to reset and make sure that, you, that what you're putting out there is saying the right things. But there's more than just color here. Imagery can go a long way. So look at this image and think about how much it's saying without saying a word, right? This actually hooks in two completely different brands without infringing on anybody's license. You know, it's like, <laughs> there's not really a legal issue happening here. And yet we're getting both audiences for Star Wars and Starbucks hooked in. And Starbucks did that with some very quick visual imagery uh, tricks. You know, they put it in front of a backdrop of space. They kind of lit up those straws to look like lightsabers. Um, you know, they did a lot with a little here and now they're hooking in a completely different market. So, you know, imagery can say a lot without saying anything at all, just in a moment. Font, you know, if you've got text, there's what you said in writing, but there's also what it looks like. And, you know, there's something to the font piece of it all that can get, you know, you can even start to feel different things when you look at these options. Serifs, often you'll see in print, uh, you know, it's more of a formal look. It kind of has those hooks on the end. Sans serif doesn't have that, so it's cleaner. It's often used for websites or anywhere online. Scripts tend to be fancier. Uh, they can be perceived as feminine, but they're generally considered more elegant. A lot of times we'll see that for invitations. Display or decorative. This category has a really broad range. So I picked one that was pretty bold. <laughs> this is like kind of Halloween to me. This one is what I think of. So, you know, there's a lot of expression. You're probably not going to want all of your copy to be like this. You know, you might use it in a headline, um, but sometimes it, de decorative fonts can be hard to read in a, you know, a long format. So that's something to think about. And then, you know, you've got this modern style as well. A lot of times you'll see graphic designers using stuff like this. It's a little cooler, a little more nuanced, a little more stylish. Um, so, you know, and, and in fact, I use, often use modern font for some of my fonts. So this is already sending a different message right now. We've also got shape squares, you know, that might mean more order and logic and security, a little bar, you know, triangles, energy or power. Sometimes they're perceived to be more of a masculine symbol. Circles often mean connection or community. They can sometimes be perceived as a more feminine symbol. So all of this is stuff that we're feeding in. And I want to show you really quickly how this all hangs together. Look how much visuals can change the meaning of words. All three of these things say Friday the 13th. Couldn't feel more different though. On the left there, it's like a Jane Austen graphic or something. In the middle, it's like a kid's party. On the right, it's like a horror movie. But again, all they really say, like the crux of this is, you know, Friday the 13th, but they get there with different visuals, different colors, different fonts. Um, there's, there's so much that these say without really having any other way to say it than a quick visual. And here's the thing, which one did your eye get drawn to first? Because that means that that one was more specifically saying something to you. It's the one you noticed more. It'll probably be different for each person. And that says something about what your interests are. So yeah, the message might be the same, but it's also completely different across these three things because of the different use of all those elements I've just described. I also want to point out that words can go a long way with this. So words can trigger and attract your audience. If you've got an opportunity to give them language in a short period of time, what words can trigger them? Brand statement words? Pay, can you talk about their pain points so they know you understand them? Can you use adjectives? Here's an example of that. Choosy moms choose Jeff. They're not saying moms choose Jeff. They're saying choosy moms choose Jeff. 
Jif has thrown down the gauntlet to moms. Hey moms, if you care about your kids' nutrition, if if it's important to you what you put in your children's bodies, then choose Jif. You know, it's like they're wanting moms to choose to, to self-select into this group of choosy moms. Um, and that is very specific what they're trying to accomplish there. Another company that does that is Snickers. The number of times this company uses the word hungry in big letters, bold font, making it, you know, like they, they emphasize this word for a reason because they want to make you hungry and they want to solve that problem with their own product. So, you know, adjectives can go a really long way. And even a word like champion, which is a noun, but, you know, you look at Wheaties, they really use the word champion. They want you to be a champion. You're, maybe you won't be an Olympic athlete that day, but you're going to be a champion in your life. You're going to, you're going to master that Excel spreadsheet like nobody's business. So, you know, they, these companies play with these words for a reason. And they're trying to build that association for you so that you understand what you're going to get. So I want to make sure I save a little time for questions here. So I'll just say you know, with a solid foundation of audience and brand, your marketing can turn into the sales that you're looking for. So hopefully you're seeing, if you're doing all this stuff right, you're taking the work out of it for your audience and you're making them see very quickly, oh, this message is for me and I should really listen to this company. So feel free to start getting questions into the chat here if you're on with me live. Here's a reminder of what we talked about to help you get there. We talked about the foundation of your marketing, then we talked about target market and brand separately. Then we added on some of those psychological tricks to capture attention. And you can ask questions about any of that. Um, and as you're getting those questions in, here's a quick reminder of the two presentations we still have coming up. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about profiting with partnership marketing. You know, how can you build relationships with other businesses or with other people to really generate more word of mouth for your business? And then the next one after that, we're going to talk about how to create a profitable marketing strategy for your business. It's my favorite topic to present because we often don't talk about customer retention and lead retention, and that's where the money is. So have a plan for your business and you will get much more out of your marketing. And that's what we're going to look at in that session. So I'm happy to answer any questions that do come up here. As a reminder, that